Well, hello everybody. Welcome to your language teaching and learning channel. My name is Santiago and as you can see I still have my mop top. Uh, we are in the, I'm doing this video in the middle of June. I don't know when I will post it, but in any case this is not an official Beetle mop top. This is more like a Rolling Stone one. But in any way, uh, we've been talking about facts and certain interesting things uh, that were taking place around the time of the Beatles, right? And uh, we mentioned last video about some of the broadcasting, uh, you know, the broadcasting uh, policies that you have or regulations. And just so that you have an idea, uh, I don't know if you've heard this song and if you haven't uh, listened to that song, this is before the Beatles. It's called Tell Laura I Love Her. Okay, this is in the 1960. Uh, two things about that song. First of all, listen to it and, you know, let me know what you think. Uh, however, at the time, you see, uh, the BBC banned it from being played on the radio for some reasons, that, whatever reasons they had. Okay, later on they changed their minds anyway, but in the beginning that, that, that song was banned. But if you listen to it, you say, well, why? I, I just don't understand why, right? And um, also, uh, remember about the stereo sound? In that song you have uh, uh, that too, like uh, if you've ever listened to song music before that, for example, in the 50s, you, have, oh, you had Elvis, but you also have like Sha Na Na. And uh, I, make, uh, I mention them because in this song you have, uh, well, he's singing Tell Laura I Love Her, whatever. Then you have the bass uh, going boom, 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 boom. And it's, you know, that's only on the left channel. So if you, if you can, uh, 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 listen to it and pay attention to it, okay? We also mentioned that at the time you had obviously other groups and the Rolling Stones were also, you know, getting to be more and more famous along with other people too. And the thing about the Rolling Stones is that uh, whatever um, uh, the, the, the Beatles did, okay, this is in the later years, right? Whatever the Beatles did, the Rolling Stones did something similar. So if you listen to some of their uh, songs and albums from the time, you will see that they more or less go at around the same speed and they, they are related. Just to give you an example, the last uh, album that the Beatles did is called Let It Be, remember? And the uh, Rolling Stones soon afterwards released another album and it was called Let It Bleed. Okay, obviously with the Rolling Stone personality. You remember they were the bad boys of rock and roll. So there were things that they would do, like musically, but there are things that they wouldn't do. An example of that is for, you know, like the Beatles were wearing suits, and that's something the Rolling Stones never would have done. Although, I, if I remember correctly, I think in around the 80s, uh, in a couple of the concerts, Keith Richards actually came out with a very nice, slick tie, but obviously that's 20 years later. Okay, uh, anyway, another uh, musician at the time, and there were many, uh, one that also, you know, uh, got to be pretty well known, and I'm sure you know now, but you probably didn't know that he, he was already famous at the time, and that's Eric Clapton, okay? Uh, yeah, Eric Clapton was famous at the time of the Beatles, you see, uh, uh, if you check uh, some pictures of uh, graffiti on the walls at, in that time, you see some things like, Clapton is God, that's how good he was, you know, good old slow hand. He, he got a, you know, built a name for himself there. And uh, just so you have an idea, if you remember, the Beatles were having in the later years some problems. Uh, uh, you know, it is said that in one of the sessions, Ringo Starr just got fed up and just left the studio and disappeared. Didn't tell anybody anything. For two weeks he went to the Bahamas or something. So there were some conflicts about, you know, what, what the, uh, the legal processes that they should Take and so on. So there were controversies there. And of course there were the musical things, including George Harrison. And I remember he started, uh, some of his songs uh, were uh, ma ma making it into their albums. And uh, in, the, in the White Album, you have about four of his songs, including While My Guitar Gently Weeps. Now it is said that uh, George Harrison had actually asked Eric Clapton to play there. Now please check, Eric Clapton was already uh, famous and when George Harrison had asked him, Eric Clapton's reaction apparently was like surprised or maybe he was in awe and his reaction had been, whoa, whoa, whoa. you guys are the Beatles. Nobody plays with the Beatles, <laughs> you know. Uh, that's how, you know, how good they were. 
Uh, however, obviously, George Harrison can, had convinced him, and uh, he did play. And if you listen to the song, "One Man Tar Gently Weeps," it's a beautiful song. And uh, of course, it's uh, Eric Clapton doing the lead there. You know, George Harrison. I said, "Look, it's my song. I'm doing the the rhythm, and I'm singing. I need I need you to do the lead." So uh, that's the story for that song. Anyway, uh, since we're talking about concerts, uh, here is an album that. I didn't show you while we were doing the discography here, and this is called The Beatles at the Hollywood Ball. Okay? Now this album was actually released in the, in the early 80s, okay? and the reason I suppose for that is because, and uh, I would urge you to check some of the early uh, videos from the Beatles concerts, okay? uh, you can't hear anything, and that's one of the reasons they stopped doing concerts, you see, they, you just can't hear anything. Uh, if you watch some of the videos, for example, start with uh, uh, the Beatles at Chi Stadium. Okay, that's a color uh, video. And in the beginning, you see uh, the, 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 the boys, not boys anymore, but they're walking through the middle of the stadium towards the stage, and you can see Paul McCartney with his bass kind of like, whoa, <laughs> that's a lot of people. <laughs> it wasn't normal to have, to have that before, you see. If you were good, uh, the Beatles started in the cavern. You know, very small area, sweaty and everything. We won't have it anymore ever again, I think. And then, if you if you got good, you you, you got to play in bigger bars or clubs, and that's why they ended up going to Germany. But it was clubs, you see, bigger clubs. That's it, not concerts the way we knew until before the pandemic here, right? So, um, and, you know, if you check those videos, even in some of the videos, you can see. Uh, uh, for example, uh, Paul McCartney in one of them, he says, okay, for our next song, if you can hear it, okay, uh, on another uh, uh, video, there's uh, John Lennon, he was a little more direct, and he, he's acted like a teacher, or something. Uh, hey, listen, please uh, be quiet and listen, okay, because the, the effects that they had on the fans was, I just haven't seen anything in the, any in all this time, and even then, if you check videos from the time from other groups, including the Rolling Stones, you can see the fans there, okay, you know, listening to the music, whatever, and uh, maybe, you know, they get up and dance the way they used to at the time, but that's it. In the case of the Beatles, everybody went crazy, screaming, shouting, fainting, and, uh, you know, the way the technology worked in that time for concerts, which, well, that was new at the time, it didn't really work out for the Beatles. That's why they stopped touring. They just were, they wanted to dedicate their time to music. But this led to other things. You see improvements in technology and everything else. Uh, for example, you see later on, you had, and I don't know if you've seen, uh, well, if you've ever had the opportunity to play in front of people, right? And even if it's not many, like a hundred, you realize that while you're playing or singing, whatever, you normally can't hear what the other people are doing. It's very hard, okay? And that's only a hundred people. Imagine thousands. So what happened was, you see, that that's the problem the Beatles had. And that's why in, in, in one video, I think, you know, they're singing something different, and then they look at each other and go, oh, well. So then you see, in, in later videos, you see in front of the stage, uh, kind of like triangular uh, little boxes there. They're called monitors, and what they did was they took all the sounds from the guitar, bass, drums, voice, and everything, so you could hear while you're playing, right? So you could hear what everybody else is doing, and you can play in, uh, at the same rhythm. So you could actually hear what the audience was hearing, right? So that was the reason. Obviously, now you don't have that, and, and if you watch videos from now, you see that uh, they have uh, little headphones inside of your earphones, and uh, like security people. It's the same for the same reason. You see, obviously, technology has improved so much, right? And uh, again, if you go to a concert now, well, I'm sorry, but the way we were going to concerts before the pandemic here, you know, like you had concerts in high uh, in uh, Central Park in New York, free concerts sometimes, and in, in England too, in London Calling, which used to take place around this time. You know, what do you have? You have in the center, in the front. Uh, the stage, uh, the artist playing there, and somewhere in the middle of the field, you have the people who work the lights and the people who work the sound. You see, that didn't exist back then. 
Okay, and you can see videos that not only in the case of the Beatles, like John Lennon or other groups, um, you know, you're, you're plugging in your guitar and you're adjusting the volume and so on. It's completely different, right? And all that had to change, you see, and it changed because of the Beatles, because nobody expected to have that kind of reaction in the fans. So they, need, they knew they, they needed to improve the sound and monitoring and everything else. Right now you have stacks of uh, speakers. Uh, back then, you, you look at the videos, you have maybe a speaker this big, an amplifier, and that's it. So definitely uh, that led to many changes and uh, things to improve in the future, right? And uh, well, one of the things that I mentioned, you know, when Eric Clapton started playing, the Beatles also started later uh, uh, having contributions from other artists, for example, Billy Preston, he played in Level B. And then, of course, the Rolling Stones later, you know, in their album Black, Black and Blue, they also have Billy Preston Day, too. So you can see little things made big changes for the future, right? So anyway, we'll continue talking about music, but in the next video, we're going to talk about December 8, 1980, okay? If you were around, you, you, you know, let me know what happened. Well, what did you feel? What did you learn? How, what, how did you react when you heard the news? If you weren't around, that is the date that uh, John Lennon was assassinated in front, in the entrance to his apartment building, the Dakota, by a fan who had actually spoken to him a few hours earlier. I hope uh, you'll be able to join me in the next video. Meanwhile, take good care of yourself, okay? Goodbye.